Hey loves, so welcome back. Today we're gonna be dabbling into the luxury side of makeup today and we're gonna do a full face of Hourglass. I'm so excited because I actually have quite a few favorites from this brand. So I figured let's do a dedicated video so I can let you guys know what I think is worth the splurge or not. So as always, make sure you grab a snack, get cozy, or grab your makeup and your brushes so we can get ready together and let's get into it and do some glam. First things first, of course, we're gonna do some eye makeup. I'm actually gonna keep it really simple because I just have these two single shadows that I wanna use today. So we're gonna do a very simple glitter smoky eye, but I'm gonna start with a little bronzer in the crease first. And I'm gonna use the ambient lighting palette. This one is the volume two. I'm gonna use that bronzer color right here and apply that in the crease. By the way, I already had a couple products from our Hourglass. I just placed an order directly on their website. So some of these products are new to me, like this palette I've never used before. But I have tried a couple different complexion products from Hourglass that I really enjoy. I feel like their bronzers and blushes just give that really healthy sheen to the skin. It's not necessarily glitter. It's just like this really pretty natural glow. For eyeshadows, these are actually one of my favorite products from Hourglass. It's the Scattered Light Glitter Eyeshadows. My favorite color, and I think if you're gonna splurge on these, you have to get the color Ray. It is such a gorgeous, neutral brown with some silver glitter. And I mean, these are just like a hybrid kind of cream eyeshadow, cream to powder, but they just have the prettiest glitter effect. This color is my absolute favorite. You can top it over other eyeshadows or just wear it on its own. I have quite a few of these, but the shade Ray is my absolute favorite. And I think today I'm actually gonna mix the color Vivid, which is a green with some glitter. I'm just gonna mix both of these colors, but look at the pigment on these. They have a really nice texture. A little bit of it goes a long way, and I just love that glitter effect. So these are really pretty, and they're so easy to use. So I think I'm gonna, let me start off with the color Ray, and then I might just add some of that green over top. Or maybe I'll do the green and then add the color Ray over top, because when you mix both of these together, you just get like this really pretty kind of mossy, shade and it's gorgeous so let's just mix so these apply really nicely either with your finger or with a brush i'm going to start with a brush and then i'll probably end up adding a little bit with my finger but with a brush you can be a little bit more concentrated with the product i'm just gonna blend directly in my crease i kind of brought it up a little bit too high but look at that color it is perfection and i love that glittery touch that these have it's so pretty I'm gonna take the color Ray. You can see I have been using this for almost a year and it is one of my favorite eyeshadows in my collection. I'm just gonna add Ray right over top because why not? Oh yeah, that's pretty. I'm just blending a little bit more bronzer into my crease, but that's pretty much it for the eye look, such a simple smoky eye. That's why I also love these eyeshadows because they're so quick and easy and they just give the prettiest effect. Then this is what the color Ray looks like just by itself. It is gorgeous. Absolutely love this as well on its own, but it's a good mixing shade as well. So I have the Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. I typically don't really honestly love to splurge on mascaras because I feel like there's a lot of good affordable ones, but let's try this out and see if it's worth it. It's definitely separating, which I like. I might just end up going in and applying some false lashes because I feel like I need it with this look and my lashes are so tiny. It is giving definitely some separation. A little bit of length, but nothing crazy. So I just applied some falsies. I used the So Wispy Lashes in the style Pixie. So the eye look is complete. We're gonna move into the skin now. I did just pick this up. It's the Intensive Hydrating Eye Balm. I didn't even know Hourglass had skincare. I tested this out this morning and it's actually so hydrating. So it's pretty much like a thicker balm. It reminds me a lot of the Honest Beauty Come and Renew Melting Eye Balm because it is pretty thick, but it is really hydrating. So I think it's nice under makeup. Hopefully concealer applies good over top of this. We're gonna test it out today, but I do feel like I need a little extra hydration under there and this does it for me. I love the texture of it because it is a little bit thicker, but it just really hydrates the under eye. And then for primer, I'm gonna use the Vanish Airbrush Primer. I've tested this out a couple times and I actually do really like how smooth and hydrating this is on the skin. It's just a very silky type of texture. But it does such a nice job at smoothing the skin out. 
Now for foundation, I'm actually going to use the Hydrating Veil Skin Tint. This is another one of my favorite products from Hourglass. I absolutely love the way this looks, the way it wears, and the coverage that it provides. I have the color 9. I feel like it might be a little bit too dark for me, but we're going to make it work. I also do like the stick foundation, the Vanish Stick Foundation. If you prefer more full coverage and something that's a bit more matte, I think you would really like this if you have combo, maybe oily skin. If you have dry skin, you might not like this just because it is a bit of a thicker type of stick foundation, but I feel like it's really good if you want more coverage or for a special occasion for day to day probably not like my go-to type of foundation stick so i'm just going to use the hydrating skin tint yeah i think this is going to be a little bit too tan this was kind of like my summer shade i still really like that this does give some type of coverage perfect for every day it's good for just kind of evening everything out an option could be, which I guess I could do that right now, but just using a little bit of the stick foundation to spot conceal, that can work as well. I'm gonna use the color Nude today, and I'm gonna apply this directly onto my brush, and I'm gonna use it just to spot conceal. Since it's a little bit thicker, it's gonna give good coverage. It is still really creamy, but it's more on the matte side. So that's why I said if you have oily skin or combo skin or you're just looking for something that's a little bit thicker, you would like this. I love how it blends into the skin and it still provides good coverage. But I don't really feel like applying this all over my face, so that's why I'm just going to use it in my problem areas and then blend it in with my brush. And mixing it in with the skin tint kind of just creates the perfect balance so it's not too heavy, but you're still giving yourself some coverage so this is a winner for me i think the foundation stick is also a winner just totally depends on what you like with your complexion but i love both of these products i think they're fabulous now let's get into some cream blush i picked up this vanish wonder blush stick i've never tried this before it's like a peachy everyday shade let's see how this blends i'm gonna apply it directly onto my brush oh that's a pretty color Ooh, that has a nice blend to it. Gorgeous matte cream blush. But the fact that it's matte and it just blended out so seamlessly, that looks really, really good. Ooh, I like that. This is a BK Beauty 109 brush, by the way. This is a nice color. I'm wondering if you wanted to apply it directly on your skin. I think you can. I think it still blends really nicely, yeah. Now let's go in with concealer. I have tested this out a couple times, and to be honest, I'm pretty sure I liked it, but I'm pretty sure this can get a little bit thick and heavy if you use too much. So I'm going to be light-handed because from what I can remember, this is full coverage. This color is probably a little bit too light for me. And sepia, it's a little bit thicker for sure, but it's creamy. Oh yeah, that gives full coverage. I had another shade in this concealer, and I totally misplaced it so i did purchase a new color but this one is too light but i do like it for a bright under eye look that looks really good it's definitely a thicker more of like a moussey type of formula so and it also is matte so i think it just again depends on what you like if you prefer something a bit more hydrating this is not for you but if you like full coverage if you prefer a thicker formula i think you would like this it is kind of drying a little bit fast so don't do what i'm doing and let it sit on your skin just apply it and blend it pretty quickly because it does seem to be drying pretty fast the concealer is creasing on me so it needs to be set it does dry pretty quick and like i said it has a thicker formula so if you don't like thick concealers you're not gonna like it so definitely have to set this and this is one of my all-time favorite loose powders is the hourglass translucent veil setting powder i went through a little mini guy and i had to buy the full size because i love it so much this is gorgeous on the skin and it's literally like a veil across your face it looks extremely airbrushed it's really lightweight it doesn't make you look cakey it's not like a really intense loose powder like the huda beauty one it's definitely just a more toned down version but it's extremely airbrushed on the skin so i'm going to use a little powder puff and i'm going to set my entire face with this powder this is definitely worth the splurge it's like in my top five for hourglass for sure and i will do a roundup at the end with my top favorite products but this is definitely one of them i mean yeah I wish this came in a pressed version, to be honest, because it's that good. 
powder is looking so good i love the way the complexion looks the blush kind of faded a little bit after the powder so we're gonna emphasize that with some powdered bronzer and blush now so i'm gonna start with blush first i actually was finally able to get my hands on one of these hourglass palettes these are always sold out the one that i wanted was actually sold out but this is the ambient lighting edit universe unlocked palette so with this you get a highlighter two blushes and a bronzer one bronzer and kind of like a bronzer highlighter as well this is so beautiful and i think what i'm gonna do is do i want to add this bronzer or do i want to do the other bronzer in my palette let's do one on one side one on the other let's start with this bronzer here mixing it in with a bit of this highlighter this brush from hourglass i've had for a few years and it's another really nice product or brush i should say it's so soft i just want to give myself a little bit more a warmth this is really pretty it's kind of glowy it gives very sun-kissed vibes that looks really good let's do the ambient lighting volume 2 palette now I'm gonna mix I'm just gonna spot clean my brush by the way I'm gonna mix in a little bit of this color with some of the middle shade on the other side you see it just gives healthy glow kind of vibes both bronzers honestly look really good across both palettes. I think the undertones might be a little bit different. This one is a bit more warm on this side from the larger palette, but it still looks really good. I think I'm going to go with this palette though, just because you get more variety in here. I love just the combination of having everything into one palette. It's perfect for traveling or just for everyday makeup. It's so practical, but this is also really cute too, because I do like the bronzer and highlighters in here, but I don't know. I think I'm kind of gearing more towards this palette today. I definitely want to add some blush, so I'm going to take this color. Color, mixing it in a bit with that one up top it's actually really pigmented but so smooth i don't think the cream blush is necessary because these are actually really nice on their own i feel like they don't really need to be layered of course we have to take that highlighter this gives essence pure nude highlighter vibes Add a little bit more highlight here The highlighters from Hourglass are more so not your traditional highlighter. It's kind of like a finishing powder. So when you put it on, it's just going to make your skin look very like you're glowing from within without giving you that highlighter look that you would get from other traditional products. This is a very unique formula. It does remind me a lot of the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. So if you're into that very natural kind of glowy vibe, you will love that highlighter. And this is pretty much that, to be honest. I think I actually like the one from Essence more, but I do like the way the blush and bronzer looks for sure. Okay, complexion is pretty much done. Another product from Hourglass that I love are their ambient lighting blushes. This one is in Sublime Flush and it is the most gorgeous corally pink. This is one of my favorite colors. I think if you're going to splurge on Hourglass complexion products, I would say go with the blushes. The bronzer is really good, but the blushes are next level and they just give you a really pretty wash of color while giving you this like glow from within. So I really like the blushes i think they bring the makeup look back to life um and they're really good topper or just like blushes that you can wear on their own let's try out these lip liners these are the shape and sculpt lip liners and i picked up two colors but i'm going to try the color uncover four and i'm going to top this off with a gloss as well super creamy it's a pretty color but i don't know if i like it on me but the formula is really nice I'm going to add a gloss over top. I have tried these before, but it's honestly been a while since I've last used an hourglass gloss. They're super minty from what I can remember, and they have tons of great shades. Some of them have a shimmer finish. Others are a little bit more matte and just creamy. This one has a glittery finish, and this one is in the color Ignite. These smell like toothpaste. I'm popping in here because I totally forgot to try out the Volumizing Glossy Balm from Hourglass. I got the color Rise. I actually bought this a few weeks back and I for totally forgot about it. So I'm going to try it out here with you guys. But with this, it's nice because the packaging, you twist it up versus, and down versus other brands where you click it. I prefer this kind of packaging. It's a lot more nude than I thought it was going to be. Mm, I like the consistency of it. It feels like a thicker lip balm with a glossy finish, almost like a lip mask. And apparently it's volumizing. I feel a little bit of that mintiness with it as well. This is a really natural color. It's pretty much like the color of my lips. This would look really good with a lip liner. 
I actually really like the texture of these. Now this lip product I like. This feels really good. It looks really good. I do feel like I kind of made my lips look a little bit more plump too, but it doesn't feel like the Too Faced lip injections where it burns. It feels a little bit minty, but like a mild mint, nothing crazy. I actually definitely would get more colors, but I like this color in Rise 100. So out of all the Hourglass lip products, I think this one is definitely worth trying. Now let's finish up the eyes. I picked up the Waterproof Gel Liner. This one's in the color Cave, and it's just a dark chocolate brown. I love how that just went on, and this is a good brown color. I'm gonna take a little bit of the shadow stick. This one is specifically the eyeshadow stick in Voyeur. And this is the lightest color. I got it just for the inner corner in brow bone. Mm, okay, it's all right. I think I like the ones from Rare Beauty more. They have a bit more of a, a pop to them. These are a bit more subtle. I think I like it more on the brow bone versus the inner corner. Let's try out the mascara now on the lower lashes. I wasn't honestly too impressed with this on my top lashes, but maybe it'll be better on the bottom. It definitely gives some length and separation, which I do like, but you can totally get this with a different mascara. It doesn't have to be this one. I feel like I want to add a little bit more highlight. I'm going to take this and kind of just dust it over the skin like i said this is pretty much kind of like a very light finishing powder so it's not going to give you an intense glow like a traditional highlighter so you could even dust this over your entire face and it's not going to be glittery it's just very subtle it just brings your skin back to life i think you would like this kind of formula if you have more mature skin or if you want to add a bit more of a glow back to your makeup without using a traditional highlighter you would like the ambient lighting formula for sure Last but not least, I'm going to set my makeup with the Soft Focus Veil Setting Spray. This I have used before. This is a very dewy setting spray. So if you're into a glow, you're going to love this. It has a really light mist on it, but I'll tell you about it in a minute. Let me just set my makeup and then we'll chat. It does melt your makeup in, but it's dewy. So super hydrating type of spray. Full face is complete. Let's do a recap on all the goodies. I'm going to start with the products that I don't really love, and then we'll end off on a good note and let you guys know what I think is worth a splurge. Starting off strong, we have the mascara. This is just a pass for me because I don't feel like it is anything extraordinary. You can get the length and separation that this gives with so many other formulas at a better price. So if you're going to splurge on anything hourglass, don't let it be the mascara. It's not it. Same with the eyeliner. I can already see that this is fading a little bit on the outer corner. This, apparently it's waterproof and it's supposed to be long lasting, but I don't really see that. This is going to be one of those liners that you're going to have to constantly be reapplying. So it's a nice color. It's a nice formula, but I don't feel like it is long wearing. Not worth the splurge. The shadow stick. You can get a much better effect with shadow sticks from Milani, Rare Beauty, tons of other brands. I'm just not really impressed with this. The finish of it is okay. This is what it looks like. I think moving forward, I will use this as a brow bone highlight, but I wouldn't repurchase. I also, as much as I loved the cream blush, I noticed that after I set it with a powder, the color kind of disappeared a little bit. So for me, I think, although it's a beautiful formula, it has a nice blend to it. I like how it's matte and still really creamy. It's kind of like the stick foundation, but in a blush form, but you can get this effect with other cream blushes, liquid blushes, so not necessary, not bad. I do like it, but it's just not worth a splurge to me. You know, like moving forward, if I'm gonna splurge on another blush from Hourglass, it's probably not gonna be a cream blush. It's gonna be another powder blush because I love that formula more than this. The setting spray, this is lackluster to me. If you want a dewy setting spray, Rare Beauty or Milani Make a Dewy, hands down. Even the e.l.f. Dewy Coconut Setting Spray, I know those are affordable compared to Hourglass. It's like two completely different brands and vibes, but I know my dewy setting sprays and this for me, it just doesn't do it for me. The lip products are also just pretty average. The lip liners are nice and creamy and pigmented. I don't know how they're gonna last, but I don't really like the two colors that I chose to be honest. And I feel like when it comes down to a lip liner, I don't remember exactly how much these were, but they were pricey and you can definitely get that creamy pigmentation from a Rare Beauty Charlotte Tilbury lip liner, LYS, Huda Beauty, one size. There's tons of other brands. I didn't really like this gloss. Again, the color is in Ignite. I remember using these before. They have some other better colors, but I think for splurging on lip glosses, I would say go with Tower 28 or Fenty Beauty Gloss Bombs. I don't think that these are really necessarily worth the splurge. They're kind of sticky, which is not necessarily a bad thing, 
but I just, I'm not crazy about them. They're okay, but I wouldn't repurchase. The concealer still felt a little bit much on my under eyes. I think I prefer the other complexion products over the concealer. I don't think the concealer is bad, but I definitely prefer the Urban Decay Naked Quickie, the House Labs concealer, or even the Tower 28 concealer where it's a little bit more creamy, hydrating, but still with great coverage. So I don't know, I don't think this is bad. I think I'll continue using it but I don't think it's my favorite. Everything else I really did enjoy. Starting with the eyeshadows, these are beautiful. If there's one thing you get from Hourglass, let it be these gorgeous eyeshadows, especially if you're into glitter. You're gonna love these. The color Ray is my favorite, but I love the shade Vivid Mixed. I also love the complexion. The airbrush primer is silky smooth skin in a bottle. This looks so good with tons of different foundations. It's a beautiful texture. And it's one of those primers where you can instantly notice and feel a difference on your skin. 10 out of 10, love this product. I'm also in love with the hydrating skin tint along with the stick foundation if you want full coverage with a matte finish you're gonna love the stick foundation make sure you're prepping your skin though you don't want to apply this over any type of dry skin even if you have oily skin you need to be prepping your skin and make sure it's nice and hydrated that way your products go on so seamlessly over top and you can mattify at the end with setting spray and powder and all the things but make sure your skin is prepped before using the stick foundation because it can be dry and difficult to blend if not but otherwise it's a really nice stick foundation I enjoy it I think it's great and I really liked it today too for spot concealing mixing it in with the skin tint it looks beautiful and the powder this is another thing definitely like second place for me the eyeshadows and this powder are like my top two favorites i love everything about this it is perfection this is a great bridal setting powder or just in general if you want to look totally airbrushed and smooth this powder is it it definitely is in my top five for favorite powders of all time something about the formula is so unique and you can set your makeup with this but it doesn't look heavy and it doesn't even look like you have powder on when you set your makeup with this it's incredible i'm also in love with hourglass powder blushes again if i were to splurge on in another hourglass blush it's going to be a powder versus a cream or like a stick like this so that's why i said just skip out on this one even though it's beautiful just get a powdered blush something about this it just brings your look together gives a really healthy glow with a beautiful wash of color and this one again is in sublime flush and i'm in love with it i also really like the hourglass face palettes i want to get another one of these these are really really good it's kind of just a timeless palette that you can keep in your collection and go to it for everything for everyday makeup i love the combination of bronzers with the blush the highlighter in here is really pretty though i personally wouldn't buy this highlighter on its own because i think you can get this effect with the essence pure nude highlighter but the fact that it's in included in here and you can mix and match I think makes it worthwhile so I really like this palette I also I did enjoy the sublime face palette the volume 2 however I do think again you can get this glowy effect with the essence pure nude highlighter let me just show you so what's unique about these is that they're not like your traditional highlighters when you apply them they're going to just give you a very light glowy veil that's not too much so ideal maybe if you have a lot of texture if you have more mature skin if you don't like a matte powder but you also want a little bit of a light healthy glow i think this is a nice palette i will continue to use it but when it comes to highlighters i wouldn't buy these highlighters by themselves from hourglass because i prefer the one from essence i'm going to show you the one from essence and how beautiful this looks are you seeing that glow it's just a little bit more a little bit more intense than the one from Hourglass, so it totally depends on what you like, but I prefer the one from Essence because it just does it for me. So when it comes to palettes, for me, I like the bigger ones more than this one. I'll continue using this one, but if I'm splurging again on another one, I would say go with the bigger face palettes, and I like the variety in here, so yeah those are it for the favorites so i think overall hourglass it's definitely luxe but there's a lot of good products that are worth the splurge a couple of these i think personally you can skip out on them it totally depends on what you like but some of these definitely stand out more than others i will keep you guys posted also on this hydrating eye balm this reminds me so much of the honest beauty common renew melting eye balm that i adore so i don't necessarily feel like this is 100 percent necessary but i'm gonna keep using it and i'll keep you updated but let me know if you guys have tried anything from Hourglass. I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think? Do you have any favorites? Let me know. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. And I cannot wait to see you in my next one. Bye.